This is the Garuda Linux Dragonized Gaming Edition. This is the same as the regular Dragonized Edition, except that it has lots of gaming software installed by default. The Dragonized Edition is, from what I understand, kind of like their flagship edition. So first thing you're going to notice about this is probably the, the uh, really colorful icons and the beautiful or maybe overly colorful theme. Um, it's not for everybody, but if, if you like this and you like the look, great. Um, it's a little, little bit too colorful for me, but it does, it, it's, it's really flashy and it does look nice. It's just a bit much for me. Anyways, the other thing you're going to notice is the wobbly windows. So I remember this from back, um, using Ubuntu with their, with GNOME a lot, many, many years ago and haven't seen this since. I know the effect has been there on different desktops, but, uh, looks like they, and it, K KDE has support for it and it looks like they enabled it here. So this is using KDE and Wayland, obviously. And the other thing I want to point out is the background blur. So this is like a kind of a signature thing with, um, I mean, this is like their flagship edition, but this is also a signature thing with uh, Garuda Linux is background blur. So you notice the wallpaper is a little blurry. If I click on the wallpaper, it comes in clear, right? If I select or, uh, you know, switch focus to any window at all, the, the, the background basically blurs, which is nice because it's not as distracting and everything, right? So other thing I wanted to point out here. So first thing I opened was a terminal, gives you this nice, uh, nice, uh, colorful highlighted, uh, summary of what's on your PC, a nice little graphic here in your terminal even. And one thing I wanted to point out is that we're using a fish shell by default. Sure. Now, sure. They have this customized, uh, customized prompt here, like they do in all their other editions, but it, we can just say, and sim similar to the other editions, they're, they're using fish by default as well, but echo shell, we're using user bin fish. We also have bash if you want bash and or if you need it for whatever reason but yeah fit fish is great too now each one other thing to point out each window has its own so let, let me pop open the file manager here and you notice more colorful windows except for this video that has uh you know you see the preview on that but all the default icons are all really col colorful all custom icons and notice this that for both of these both of these windows, uh, file manager and terminal, all the file, the, the menus are up at the top of the screen, kind of like a Mac OS thing. And the other thing I wanted to point out, the KDE menu is up at the top of the screen. Now this, I'm used to seeing this on fresh KDE installs. I'm used to seeing it on the bar at the bottom here. Um, so on this by default, clear bar, no, uh, you, you could change this if you want, but just these colorful icons on the clear bar at the bottom here, I actually added a few of these icons here since installing the system. Uh, but yeah, up at the top here, we, we have this menu at the top. I'm used to it being at the bottom. It feels more natural for me at the bottom, especially for KDE, but for whatever reason, they put it up here and that's basically where they have it. So, uh, another thing I wanted to show you is, and, and basically you can search for all your apps here and whatever else, just like normal stuff on KDE. The other thing I wanted to show you is the workspaces. So you, you have a hot corner enabled by default. You can disable that if you want. This will give you an overview of all the windows open in your current workspace and show you the other workspaces by default. So you could switch, switch over to this workspace or this workspace and have different things running on each workspace or desktop, and you can actually rename them. So you could change this to like work, right? So you can rename your, your workspace is, and I doesn't look like it's letting me drag them. Either way, normal KDE stuff. You can add a new one if you want. You can remove a workspace, jump back to this workspace, and you can configure the shortcuts for switching, the keyboard shortcuts for switching workspaces as well. He, and a Windows button or the Super or Mod button will open up the menu just like normal. Now, I also wanted to show you the Minimize Maximize buttons. We have some nice, uh, well, I'll, I'll just show you. It has some nice animations enabled by default here. And you, you can enable this and, in, and disable this on basically any KDE. This is standard KDE behavior. It's just not usually enabled by default. But you, you can change these any way you want, like wobbly windows, 
um, you know, animations for minimizing and maximizing, stuff like that. It, it's all normal KDE stuff. They just gave you a custom theme, arranged things around, and enabled certain things by default, which is pretty nice if you want a flashy gaming-oriented uh, desktop, which is basically what Garuda Linux is, or, or this edition of Garuda Linux. Now, the other thing I want to show you is Alt-Tab behavior. So you can say Alt-Tab, and it gives you this nice preview like this. And this even works with full screen applications. Like if, if I'm running a full screen game in the background, I can still alt tab and they show up like a card, but just like this. Same thing if you do windows tab, same thing. And you can say alt tilde to switch between, okay, you know, what? I would need to right click and open in a new window. So if I have two windows of the same application open, alt tilde will switch between only that different windows of that one application, whereas alt tab <clears throat> switches between all your open applications in that one desktop, right? So I could jump over here and open, let, let's say the settings app, jump, jump, whoops, jump right back over to this desktop here and alt tab will not include the settings application because it's only the stuff on the current desktop, which is nice behavior. I think that's how it should work. Now, one other thing I want, so I think we, yeah, super tab, alt tab, and alt tilde. That's all the regular behavior I wanted to show you. Now, I also wanted to show you that Steam is working. So um, this came with Steam pre-installed. You could install it pretty easily on the regular Dragonized edition. But this is the Dragonized Gaming edition, so it came with Steam already installed. I defined it on the menu up here and I pinned it to the menu down here. So I pinned Steam here and also the Minecraft launcher. I did that manually. Um, I'm going to show you a separate clip for that, but first let's take a look at Steam. So click on Steam. I just want to launch this and maybe launch one game really quick. And real quick, I just wanted to mention all the remaining clips for the Dragon Eyes Gaming Edition. All of these video clips have a screen tearing issue that was caused by my capture card. So you're going to see the bar at the top of the screen appearing at the bottom of the screen. So it's just a little bit of tearing. Um, try to ignore that. That's not what it looks like on the actual screen. That's just my capture card capturing the display the wrong way. So this is Steam working. I A lot of the games on here that I really wanted to show you are really big and would take forever to download. And I'm gonna wipe the system out and install a new one in a little bit to test that. So I didn't want to download anything too huge, but yeah, there's there's my Steam library. Um, here's the store. I installed Deep Rock Galactic. So I think I'm gonna try testing that out real quick. So actually that one I already installed. It was just a few gigs and I should have it here, Deep Rock Galactic. So let's just drag this down here. And there we go, we have a little launcher here. No custom icon, so it looks a little bit different. And here we are, it's running. I just wanted to kind of show you something running. So uh, yeah, red, relatively okay um, frames per second. Um, it might not be, yeah, the recording should show this pretty well. But yeah, there you go. There's a good example, Deep Rock Galactic running from Steam. And uh, yeah, it looks okay. I know there are way more intense games to, to demo, but uh, it's not, not so much a Garuda Linux thing. It's more just my hardware, but there are better games I'd like to demo, but I'm just sticking with this one for now, just because it was easy to install and I, I it kind of demos my hardware well enough. But you can, one thing I wanted to show you, you can alt tab out of this and you see this gives you like kind of like cards in this 3D card carousel thing. So you can tab through all your stuff. Like you could jump out into a terminal here and you could, you could run like H, oops, H top and just check out the performance, uh, mess around with whatever you want outside the game. And you can just tab right back into the game and it seamlessly switches between full screen mode and windowed mode. So really smooth, really nice. Um, everything seems smooth and, and, uh, and nice. So it's a good gaming experience on Linux. And uh, yeah, so far I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I, I haven't tried gaming on Linux um, anything serious in a while other than Minecraft. So I was actually surprised at how smooth everything works and how you don't have to mess around with almost anything. So this was actually pretty nice. So the other thing I wanted to show you, you notice there's a Minecraft launcher here. I, I already installed that. I'm going to cut away to that right now. All right, so here we are with the terminal and I'm going to zoom in here just so you can see it a little bit more uh, so you can read the actual text. I'm just going to run sudo pacman dash capital S Y and type Minecraft. And I got to 
type that correctly there, minecraft-launcher. And just hit enter. And there we go. I'm going to kind of fast forward this part of the video here. And there we go. Got it installed. So now I'm going to go up here on the menu. And I'm just going to search for it. Grab the launcher there. Notice that's a custom Garuda icon there for Minecraft. Um, so drag it on there. Launch it for the initial time. And you see that. All right, so that was just a quick clip of me installing the Minecraft launcher, which I already had on here by the time I started recording this video. Just wanted to stick that clip in here to show you, you know, what I did to get the Minecraft launcher installed. So the Minecraft launcher did not come with with this version of Garuda Linux, but Steam did come with it. So the, the, the time I, when I initially ran Steam, it just took a minute for it to, uh, you know, install everything. I did that before recording this, but it took, it took a, not to install everything, but you know, it just updates itself every time. So it took just a minute for, to do that, but Steam was there and already working. I've just logged in with my account and it was uh, pretty good. Um, Minecraft launcher, I do install that manually, but yeah, there you go. Here's the Minecraft launcher. And one thing I want to point out about this, I was using an older version of Ubuntu before, and maybe I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. Maybe because it's old, the libraries are old, or the maybe I messed up the, the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Something I did um, caused it to not work very well. So Minecraft would work okay, but without a great frame rate. But anytime I tried to use OBS, while while using Minecraft, my system would come to a complete standstill still. So here I am, I can now launch OBS and I can start recording and I can switch right back into Minecraft and it still runs pretty smoothly. Now, if it looks slow at all in the in the video, I'm recording this with a capture card separate from my machine. It's looking very, it's a, it's a little bit slow I see on the capture card screen, it's a little bit lag. I don't know. I think it's moving okay. But um, I don't know if what you see in this video is going to be what I'm seeing. But this runs pretty smoothly on my desktop. So it's running very smoothly with OBS recording it. So I have two instances of OBS. I have OBS recording this video. And then I have another instance of OBS right here recording on my desktop. I'm going to stop that one. And I have another copy of OBS running on another machine using a capture card to see my desktop here. And that's why if you see the edges around the windows and, and the text in this video, it's not quite as, oh, and by the way, OBS comes with Garuda Linux. So this was installed already. I didn't have to install it. It comes with prepackaged with it. But if you see some of the text you see in this video isn't quite as smooth as it could be sometimes, that is, that that's going to be because I, I'm, I'm blaming it on my capture card and something with my OBS configuration. Somehow, maybe it's like the mismatch between resolutions or something. Something causes the text to not be as clear. But the, on my desktop, this looks really sharp and clear compared to what you're seeing in this video. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that. That's, um you know, Minecraft with... So on my older version of Ubuntu, it was running a little bit laggy. When I would start up OBS to record playing Minecraft on the same host, Minecraft would lag and would barely even move at all. It would be like a frame per second instead of 60 frames per second. Now it runs nice and smooth. Like you can see uh, 50, 60 frames per second, no slowing down and 120 V-Sync for whatever that's worth. I know you can get higher with Minecraft, but um, yeah, that's what I have. Um, you know, with my current settings, that's what I have. So working very nicely, a lot better than the older version of Ubuntu. Just wanted to point that out too. So just wanted to demo a couple game related things just so you could see kind of how it works. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you in this video, uh, real quick, I wanted to show you this little thing here. It looks like a little ghost or whatever, like one of those characters from Pac-Man. Click on this. Now this is Octopi. So this is a a QT based Pac-Man front end. Basically what it says down here, that's basically what it is, Octopi. So this is basically just a, a GUI front end for, for Pac-Man, the uh, Arch Linux package manager, which obviously is what Garuda Linux is using. Garuda Linux is based off of Arch Linux. So Garuda Linux uses Pac-Man and a lot, they use their own repos, but they also use the Garuda, they use the Arch repos and some custom Garuda Linux re repos and some other repos. And this is just a front end tool for that. So you could search, for example, GIMP, and you, you can find the GIMP there. And you, you there are other tools you could either install or whatever else. One other thing besides this I wanted to mention, there is Garuda Rani. Now I've already checked this out separately from this video, but there are cut there are a bunch of custom Garuda tools, um, Garuda Linux specific tools 
this is one of them. I'm not going to get too deep into this here because I already covered this, but I, I already covered this in my other video. So yeah, this is one of the tools that lets you do a lot of stuff, install software, change settings, stuff like that. So we look at each of the Garuda Linux tools and utilities in our more general Garuda Linux video. So you, you should definitely hit check that video out. I'm not going to go into too much depth with this because uh, check that video out to uh, to learn more about this tool and to actually demo all the other Garuda Linux tools and utilities. So yeah, definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, but also check out our other Garuda Linux videos that I just mentioned. We're covering all the other or most of the other Garuda Linux editions. And we also have one. So we're going to have a video for one of most of the editions. So each edition is going to have its own video. We're going to have one main big, big uh, Garuda Linux video showing you Garuda Linux in general, the concepts behind it and covering each of those different editions all in one video. So if you want everything in one video, uh, check that one main video out. I should have a playlist for Garuda Linux, but also check out the links in the description of this video for the other Garuda Linux videos. But that's about it for today. So remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys on that next video.